Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark with Thailand Unplugged. Back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up today. China feels it no longer needs the foreign media, but it still can't hide the truth. Da Nang, Vietnam, prepares to welcome back visitors. International airlines selling flights to the land of smiles, Thailand. Thailand police threaten jail time for anyone taking selfies at protests. Once again, I'm Stephen Clark. Those and other stories coming up from the land of smiles and Southeast Asia. China feels it no longer needs the foreign media, but it still can't hide. China's leaders have always frowned upon unfavorable or critical coverage. After declaring a resounding victory against the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, a newly confident China so far this year has tested new ballistic missiles, threatened the Taiwan by ignoring the medium line in the Taiwan Strait, tried to steal territory from India with border clashes, approached the South China Sea problem it has created with a heavy hand, militarized the South China Sea, claimed the whole of the South China Sea as sovereign territory of China, expanded its erasure of Muslim culture in China, and extended its clampdown of Hong Kong's autonomy and freedom. Way to go, China! At the same time, China has shown a new aggressiveness in trying to curtail the activities of the foreign reporters in the country and quashed any unfavorable coverage of the Chinese Communist Party or its leader, General Secretary Xi Jinping. Where China once tolerated even courted the international media as a sign of the country's re-emergence in the world, its leaders today see foreign correspondents as meddlesome presence they can easily do without. Many foreign reporters have been forced to leave China since the start of the year. Even after the events of 1989 with the Tiananmen Square massacre, only two American journalists for Associated Press and a Voice of America were immediately expelled. But hey, that's nothing to releasing a virus upon the whole world. For the first time since 1970s, Australia media outlets have no correspondence based in China. The Washington Post has had no correspondence in China. The New York Times, which once had one of the largest and most prolific bureaus in China, now has a single foreign correspondent covering the vast country's 1.4 billion people. Chinese officials have defended their action as mere tit-for-tat retaliation for the treatment of its journalists overseas. China's self-assured rulers now believe they no longer need the international media to promote China as a financial and an investment powerhouse and tell China's stories to the world. Now then, Chinese media outlets and institutions are active on Twitter, which is uh, blocked in China to disseminate the official line directly bypassing foreign media gatekeepers. China may now want to expel foreign correspondents to control its own narrative and stem negative coverage. But its connection to the world via the internet and other sources means the country can no longer be isolated and escape critical coverage no matter how hard it tries. And the world as a whole is seeing the real China. Da Nang, Vietnam, prepares to welcome visitors. To recover its tourism sector, post-Chinese coronavirus and welcome visitors once more, the central coast city of Da Nang has decided to keep prevention measures in place at tourism destinations. After a month in the new normal, one of the world's most beautiful beaches is ready to welcome visitors with its serene beauty, cleanliness and safety. All services are now available. 11 of 16 tourist sites, half of all accommodation providers in the city, have reopened already, often committing to ensure pandemic prevention measures are followed. The number of domestic flights to and from Da Nang are gradually increasing and visitors have begun to return to the beach city in droves. Its tourism sector has determined that being a safe destination is the key factor in attracting tourists 
post-Chinese coronavirus. The city's tourism sector will introduce stimulus programs with attractive offerings to meet demands among tourists in the new normal, with safety given top priority. International Airlines Selling Flights to the Land of Smiles Ten international airlines have started selling tickets to Thailand and the first group of special tourists is set to land in Bangkok on October the 20th, the Transport Ministry of Thailand said. All foreigners arriving will be required to follow procedures set by the Centre for Covert-19 Situation Administration, including mandatory 14 days, 14 day quarantine in alternative state quarantine, ASQ, facilities. The airline selling tickets to Thailand are Emirates, Qatar Airways, Etihad Airways, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, Lufthansa, Swiss Air, Austrian Air, AVA Air and KLM. A flight from Shanghai carrying Thais as well as a group of 41 tourists with special tourist visa STV is set to land at Sawinapum Airport on October the 20th in the afternoon while another group of 100 tourists from Guangzhou is scheduled to land in Bangkok on October the 28th. The Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand has announced that Thailand has opened its skies, but flights are only allowed to land under strict regulations. Thai Airlines, meanwhile, have yet to seek permission for international destinations, as airports overseas are open under conditions that will not guarantee enough profit. And you can't get people used to flying again without a little bit of profit. Hey, I got an idea. How about the Thai government compensates Thai Airways to bring tourists into Thailand? They come to Thailand and spend all their money in Thailand, they leave again, giving Thai Airways a few little dollars in compensation and everyone's a winner. So Thailand, give out cheap tickets and reap the rewards. No? Oh, okay. Thailand's police threaten jail to anybody taking selfies at protests. The state of emergency recently imposed on Bangkok amid escalating political unrest carries some sweeping powers, some of them rather creative. Police are warning that anyone taking a selfie at anti-government protests is risking two years in jail and a fine of up to 40,000 Thai baht. You'd have to really want to take that photo, wouldn't you, really? The emergency degree is being invoked in everything from arrest of protesters to their leaders to the threat of restrictions on being slapped on media outlets whose reporting is deemed unfavourable. We are under a severe state of emergency which is social law. We must hold these laws seriously. Everything we do is under international standards. Meanwhile, the latest clampdown has led to the arrest and subsequent temporary release of one doctor, the firing of another after a riot police in Bangkok used water cannon laced with chemicals to disperse the protesters on Friday. Around 400 Thai doctors called on officials to refrain from using such irritant against activists. A doctor at one of Bangkok's general hospitals was promptly fired for having put his name to the letter in a statement. The director of the military hospital, General Ritonga Nana, says the facility could not support employers who are allied with the king's enemies and who are against chemicals being sprayed into peaceful protesters' eyeballs. Meanwhile, another doctor has been released on bail after being arrested for violating the emergency degree. Tassaporn has become somewhat of a hero figure to pro-democracy activists after he began offering medical assistance at a rally and criticised officials for tactics used against peaceful protesters. Despite the state of extreme emergency in place over the capital since Thursday, protesters went on to gather at venues across the metropolitan area, which quickly spread to which quickly spread to provinces throughout the land of smiles, Thailand.
giving space to people's opinions from all sides with openness, transparency, responsibility to the facts. A free media is an essential element in any democratic society. And a bona fide journalist should be allowed to report important developments without the threats of bans, suspension, censorship or prosecution dangling over their heads. Thailand's court shuts down news sites linked to Thaksin. A Thailand news outlet connected to the exiled former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra was ordered to shut down Tuesday over its coverage of an anti-government protest in Bangkok as demonstrators prepared to take to the streets for the sixth consecutive day. Voice TV, a website partly owned by Tuxen's family, was one of four media organisations under fire for their reporting of the youth-led pro-democracy protest movement and has been critical of the government. Thousands of protesters have massed in the capital for daily demonstrations, floating a ban imposed last week prohibiting gathering of more than four people. They are demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Priyat Achinachar, who was first brought to power in a military coup and reformed the kingdom's powerful monarchy. Media freedom is important, but in some cases there are some media outlets disseminating, distorting information that is inciting unrest, Priyat told reporters. The media outlet allegedly published and broadcast material that was violating computer crimes laws, an emergency degree, according to the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society. Voice TV executives denied protest coverage had jeopardised national security. For 11 years, Voice TV has been committed to democracy, giving space to people's opinion for all sides with openness, transparency and responsibility to the facts, he said in a statement on their website. The Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand expressed deep concern that the Royal Thai Police were investigating Voice TV. Four media outlets have been broadcasting live footage over Facebook during the protest. The court ruling comes a day after the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society said it had flagged more than 325,000 messages on social media platforms that violated the Computer Crimes Act, which critics say is used to muzzle dissidents. The Thai court is yet to announce a decision on whether to shut down the other three media outlets. Thai protest leaders Penguin and Rung booked by police after release on bail. Two prominent protest leaders, Penguin and Miss Rung, were booked by the Chansom Krum police after they were released on bail from Tanyaburi Prison in the Patam Thani province. The two protest leaders were supposed to be released last night after the appeals court granted them bail on the condition that they must not repeat the same alleged offence again. The court's order, however, was made after the prison gate had already been shut for the night, so they had to so they had to spend another night in jail. Well, because the prison officials forgot how to open their gates after hours. Now, when they were released in the morning, guess what? Police from the northwestern province of Riet were already waiting for Penguin, armed with a court-issued arrest warrant for illegal sedition related to a protest rally held in September the 3rd, but Penguin refused to sign documents to acknowledge the charges. Later, Chansongkrum police arrived at Tanyanbury Prison with the arrest warrants for both Penguin and Miss Rung. Both were eventually escorted to Region 1 Border Patrol Police Camp in Pathantani for questioning.